Kermit's dad and my and myself coached back in the dark ages. Uh, <laughs> Pete's I basket. Talk, Pete's yeah, basket. I, I talked to his dad on the phone the other day, and it was great to talk to him. And we've been friends a long time, and he's done a terrific job over there. And I I know he's busy, and I'm not going to take up much of his time this morning. But I appreciate him being on. And uh, good morning, Kermit. How you doing? Good morning, Coach. I can I can remember. I think, Coach, when you were an assistant. I was in the 70s. I remember one time y'all beat State at State, and you came over to my house. Just after the game, <laughs> hang out with Dad. I mean, oh, times have changed a little bit, had to go. <laughs> yeah, they really have. They have changed com- tremendously. You know, Curry, I tell you the thing that surprised me. We have uh, approximately five games by all of you teams. We've got 18 road wins, which never happened when I was coaching Kermit. And the other factor is through these five games, we only have two teams in the league, Vanderbilt and Georgia, that hasn't won a road game. And to me, it, it, it's it's a little bit unusual. Yeah, it, it is. You know, last year I think Ole Miss won one. It was the very last game at Missouri. Because that doesn't happen very much. I think, it again, it's just a testament of really of the balance of the league, how good the teams are, you know, and not intimidated by going on the road. And, uh there's been a lot of tight games throughout the league, you know, early in the season. Have you have you found the league different than when you you know, I know back when your dad was coaching, but have you found the league different maybe than you thought it might be in any way since you since you've taken the job from middle? Yeah, you know, coach, when the last time I was I was really I was in it, I was working for John at LSU. Yeah. And there was good teams in the league. It just wasn't the depth and as and I just in my short time of going around the league God, the biggest thing that sticks out to me, number one, just how athletic, how big and physical the games are, but just how much of a commitment everybody's made to basketball, Coach. I mean, just facilities, assistant coaching salaries, recruiting budgets, all the amenities around your facilities. That's the biggest thing. Like, everybody in the league is all in to making basketball, you know, trying to be the best league in the country. Well, we're talking with Coach uh, Kermit Davis. Hey, Kermit, it's it's Barry. You're you're breaking Wimp's rule now, uh, Kermit. You're winning too many games the first year. He he says you don't want to win that many the first year. <laughs> I, uh, I said that in football. Told back the same back. thing. <laughs> Barry, me and you both come from the same cloth. I promise you that. So, tell you what, you better get them while you can. But you never know when that thing will go away. Yeah, but talk uh, about this team, Andy. Obviously, Andy Kennedy is all a friend of ours, and I think. The you know the relationship between you and Andy is good, so I, I'm sure you guys talked about what you have. You brought some of your own pieces in there as well. You guys are off to a 14 and three start, four and one in the SEC. Uh, you're doing a tremendous job. The home court advantage there in a beautiful arena has really gotten great, Kermit. Just talk about the transition over there. Yeah, you know, AK and I have been friends for years and years. He grew up in Louisville, Mississippi, and obviously I'm a little older than Andy, but. Uh, and we talked two or three times after I got the job. And uh, by my first SEC win against Vanderbilt, AK texted me, one of my very first texts. And so he, he wants Ole Miss to do well. And uh, it's one of those things. He won a lot of games. And just his last year, it just for some reason, it just kind of didn't go as planned. It can happen to all of us. And, uh, you know, we only had five guys coming back. But we had three good guards and two, Terrence Davis and Brian Tyree, I mean, are elite guards in this league. They really are. And uh, two bigs are starting to play a little bit better. So in in any transition, I hate to ever say you change the culture. That's that's so unfair to people in front of you. You know, so I I told my staff, you know, you just have to come in and set your own culture. There's different ways to do it. And and I think our guys have started to buy in more about defending. Uh, The ball's moving a little bit better. And uh, then we bought, you know, we brought in two or three players that have helped us. And, uh, so it has been. It's been good. And you're right, one thing, Barry, this home court advantage in the pavilion, we've sold out the last two games. I think it's just maybe 100 or so tickets for Iowa State on Saturday. That'll sell out. And it really is. It's an electric atmosphere in that building. Yep, Dad. Um, talk a little bit about Alabama. They, they're they very, very good against Kentucky. Uh, had a chance to beat Tennessee. Didn't quite do that. Uh, lost a disappointing game, I guess you'd say, to A&M. But all teams are that way. They're, you know, they're sort of up and down unless you just – you know, just like Tennessee's been playing. Uh, talk a little bit about Alabama. Yeah, you know, I just, I like their team a lot. Like, so you throw the tape against Tennessee. I mean, if they make free throws, they win. You know, yep. they had a team that may be ranked number one in the country. And obviously Kentucky, I mean, just a, a great win at home. 
uh, versus Kentucky. So you know they can play and beat the elite teams in our league. You know, the A&M games, those games are just going to happen throughout the course of the year. You know, I love their freshman guard, Kyra Lewis. Patty was, has been outstanding shooting the ball. The front line maybe is, is athletic. You know, Hall, they just they rebound the ball at such a high level. So I think they've got they got all the pieces to be, you know, a team that it looks it looks like an NCAA tournament team on tape, and and they'll be a huge factor in this race down the stretch. Uh, you got the you got the freedom of movement um, situation, and I have decided after watching a lot of games that a lot of it depends on who's calling the game. Uh, that there'll be some people, regardless of if you put your hands on somebody, they're on the dribbler, they're going to call it. There are some kids or some officials that that won't call it unless it just me- really means something they feel like in the game. Is it kind of that way with you, or, or uh, am I wrong on that? No, I, I think, you know, Coach, like anybody, you know, the human nature part, but I do think, you know, like we were all scared to death of it, you know, when it came in, but, you know, like, we're averaging around 80, 81 a game. Uh, it's amazing how many teams in our league scoring is, is so up. So if you're a fan standpoint, you know, as far as, as freedom of movement, I think on the ball is a lot more. We're kind of a little old, older school. We play off ball screen. Sure, everybody does, but more motion away from the ball. I don't know if they call that freedom of movement like they do on the ball. You know, they'll still yeah. stand up cutters, but but it is. I think for the most part, I mean, I appreciate the SEC is it really has. It's 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 really really good night in and night out. What I've seen, and um, obviously everybody's going to miss some calls. We're going to miss some calls, coaching too. But uh, I, I do think it's you know from one official to the other, or maybe a certain game atmosphere, the physicality of it. Yeah. Uh, Kermit, yeah. your team shooting, as I look at these statistics, wow, 49% from the floor, holding your opponents to 41, shooting 75% uh, from the line. Just maybe tell the listener that hadn't seen you guys play, kind of what is y'all's philosophy offensively. You guys are, are shooting the basketball really, really well this season so far. Yeah, thanks, Bear. You know, uh, I really think that, number one, we've got good guards. I mean, you've got good guards. You know, they can get paint touches and, and, and shoot. And we haven't shot it uh, from the three, Bree and Tyree in league play like he has overall. But I really think this. I mean, obviously we're going to try to score early in transition. We we, we talk about first side dribble shots. And for the fan, you know, you, obviously you guys know, you know, just first side of the floor, a dribble shot. It's such a bad shot. And our percentages are unbelievably low. And then when you start getting it to third and fourth side, just it goes from 26, 27% to 59, 65, 66%. So just the ball movement going from side to side. And, you know, and I think it is true. The more passes, more points. And that's why I think our percentages are up. For the most part, you know, those guys have been good about the right guys are shooting balls from spots they can make them in. Uh, Kermit, when you guys were at Middle Tennessee, I always – would be on Twitter screaming, these guys deserve to win, be in the tournament, regardless of what happens in your conference tournament. It's so difficult for these some of these mid-major uh, teams. I call them mid-major, but they're really not. But, the, you know, the pressure of their conference tournament, you guys, when you were there, I mean, it's all or nothing. It's it's win this thing and, and getting the big dance. You know, where you get to the SEC, I mean, there's a little cushion. Hopefully six, seven, maybe eight teams will get in. Maybe just talk about – the pressure when you're at a mid-major school where it all boils down to the conference tournament, how difficult that is. Yeah, it is, Barry. You know, there's probably three years we got upset in our tournament that, you know, in our RPI was anywhere from 30-something to 45 and maybe had the most road wins and didn't get in. Last year, we had the most road wins. We were 12-1 and in true road games. We were ranked in both polls in the top 25, and we got upset uh, in our tournament and didn't get in the tournament. And here, you know, uh, like we get, we're ranked 18. We get beat by, by really, I mean, LSU may have the best talent in the league. I mean, we got beat by LSU, beat Arkansas. You know, and you, in the middle, you know, you're going to get out of the top 25. We're here, probably a great chance you're going to stay in the top 25, you know, and, and your net doesn't drop. I mean, you can get beat by LSU, and it kind of stays the same because of their strength and schedule. The main thing I've seen is just in Conference USA, it was a really good, well coached league. There just wasn't hardly any lot of opportunities to get top 50, top 75, top 100 wins. And now they're all over the place. And then you can go get it like we did at Mississippi State, get a quadra one win on the road. But that just carries a lot of weight for a long time. Yep, that. Uh, it sounds like they're trying to, to be sure that they get the NCAA representatives correct. 
and I, you know, I don't know how many SEC will get. Uh, eight last year was a lot. Uh, when I was coaching, we never got that many. Um, is does the NCAA committee have that? Are they doing that the right way? I mean, I know you're not going to criticize them, but are we are we going the, in the right direction, uh, trying to get the right teams in? Yeah, I think we're all just waiting, coach, on this net. You know, and and I know those they're smart people, not smarter than me. And people ask me, you know, we understand the quadrant one and two and three. And Dan Leibovitz and Commissioner have done a great job over the last three or four years of upgrading non-conference schedules. And I think that's been the critical part of it. You know, that we're going in with a net rating or RPI rating so much better. So I just think that this net is a new system. Uh, I think we got to give it a chance. It's like everything. Go through a year, let them tinker with it a little bit. There's going to be some adjustments, obviously. But I think the, the biggest thing for, for us as a as a league, you know, is doing well in November and December and scheduling the right way. I mean, so you just got to go out and schedule. Because now, Coach, it seems to me, you're not punished so much for your bad losses, but you're rewarded for who you beat. And so I yeah. think that's the biggest thing is go out and schedule well, you know, and try to get some of those priority wins early. Well, uh, I know you got so much to do, and I don't want to take up any time, but I, w- I would, before I let you go, uh, talk a little bit about what the new arena has meant. Uh, I know you weren't there when the old one was there, but you know about it, and Alabama's fixing to revi- re- redo theirs in a, a year or two and change it a little bit like down on the floor, more like Auburn has theirs and so forth. Tell our listeners a little bit about uh, your feelings about your new arena. Yeah, I mean, Coach, I, I took our Middle Tennessee team into here two years ago and played. First time I'd been in the pavilion. And, boy, I, I told Ross Bjork, the AD, I said, Ross, you did not miss a trick. I mean, it is perfect size. Like, we, the, the capacity is 9,500. It is every amenity in NBA arena. And I said it then, I mean it, not because I'm the coach. It's the nicest on-campus arena in college basketball. Great. I mean, that's the biggest. We don't need the biggest. I mean, as yeah. far as amenities – uh, food services at three different levels, fan experience, uh, easiness of getting into the arena. All the students, the 1,500, 1,800 seats of students are all around. The, they get the best seats in the house. They just didn't miss a trick. And, and so when a kid, he can visit anywhere in the country. He comes to our campus and takes an official visit. He'll walk in our arena and none are better. And so that's, that's a great feeling just in the recruiting process. Well, Kermit, Very I'm not I'm not coaching in college anymore, but Wimp still loves the free stuff. Oh, would you, would you send him an Ole Miss shirt so he <laughs> leave me alone? I don't I don't hey, need anything, hey. Kermit. He's starting on me. Hey, coach, let me tell you one thing. Every time my dad sees me, he'll go, "Boy, that shirt is a nice shirt." Mm-hmm. Well, I, what do you suppose yeah. shoes? I said, "Well, Dad, yeah. those are Nike shoes." So, Barry. Yeah. They never changed. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna let you go. But I called him the other day, and he didn't know who it was. And I said, um, I, "Aren't you? A, you're a big old Miss fan now, aren't you?" And he said, "Yeah, kinda." He never did. He never would come out. Just you know, I miss him. <laughs> and he, he he said, "Who is this?" He said, "Kinda." You know, he didn't want. He, he's afraid it was a press guy or something. He didn't want to say anything. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, I appreciate you being on Barry and I do, and and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, See Kermit. You guys. See you, buddy. Okay. All right.